In today's video, I tried to get a hold of the cheapest graphics card in the UK. Usually fine, but this time, everything went horribly wrong. Right, so this right here is meant to be the cheapest graphics card in the UK. I bought it off of CEX, which means I get a two-year warranty, and also means that anyone can go on their website and actually buy this card. It cost me a whopping £8, so it's not exactly an amazing deal, but the thing to take away from this is, it is a graphics card. It is not a display adapter, this is actually a card sold for gaming. So what is inside the box? Well, it's not the GTS 250 I ordered, it is in fact, apparently, a GT210. But someone clearly must have known this, as you can see on the label for the bag it was shipped in, a sandwich bag no less, which is one of the worst forms of packaging I've actually come across from CEX, but that's besides the point, it's almost like someone has crossed out GT210 and wrote 250 beneath it. Oddly enough, the price has been crossed out as well, and I've got no idea why this has happened. I mean, I'm lucky to have a great local CEX store, but wherever this came from, one, it's been packaged poorly and all the screws have come out of the graphics card, they're just rattling around in the sandwich bag they shipped it in, and even if it is just a cheap graphics card, well, this isn't right. You can't just cross out the name and send me one that isn't the graphics card I've ordered. But anyway, before I return this card, we might as well put it in a PC and find out what we've actually got. Just a heads up, things get even worse from here. Right, so as you can see, I've actually got the graphics card in my PC. It uh, is as, just as depressing as you expect in there. Turns out, it's not even a GT210. It's even worse. Once the drivers are installed, it is showing up as a GeForce G8400. G98 architecture, revision A2. Which I think is actually one of the worst ones. Um, either way, this is a really hateful graphics card, but we've got it all set up with the latest drivers. It's whole 256 megabytes of RAM. I didn't realize that. This was marketed as 512. The RAM doesn't even line up. Either way, this is an even worse graphics card than the one that they mistakenly sent to me. So the story gets even worse from here. So a bit of a summary on what's happened here. I've ordered a GTS 250, a rather competent graphics card capable of running things like GTA 5 and Skyrim, got shipped an apparent GT210 in a sandwich bag, and ended up receiving an even more hateful graphics card, the Nvidia GeForce 8400 GS. And all I can really say is I genuinely despise this card. But to see how much of a blunder this really was, I've benchmarked an 8800 GT, which is very similar to what we were meant to get. In fact, I think the 250 GTS is actually a rebrand of the 8800 GT. So why don't we compare just how poor this graphics card we got sent is compared to what we were meant to get. Now, given this is a really hateful graphics card, I've decided to overclock it as much as possible. Unfortunately, this card gets even worse. We have no voltage control, and best of all, even if you force the fans to ramp up, well, the card completely ignores it, saying that I even went to the extent of looking into only to find out that that is apparently a feature. It is a feature that you cannot control the fan on your own graphics card. You have even less control over your misery as you try to force the clocks up. Fortunately, after pushing up the limits as far as possible in MSI Afterburner, we did manage to achieve a relatively healthy overclock, essentially maxing out both sliders. So we've actually got a rather well-binned card, which should ease some of the misery that CEX has inflicted upon us. Now, all of these benchmarks have been captured on my main PC as usual, and it feels particularly, particularly, particularly horrific having to put this mess in my computer. But actually, we do at least have a HDMI output on the card, which is its one saving grace. Unfortunately, before we even got into the benchmarks, more pain was inflicted upon us, as every time I went to record this card, the frame times would go through the roof. Not that they were particularly good anyway, but trying to record this card, actually showing you what it was doing, caused it to perform far worse than I've ever seen any card do before. Either way, what I've managed to do is actually do some workarounds to get capture working sort of, which means that you guys can see the pitiful performance when it comes to this horrific mistake of a graphics card in the benchmarks. Starting us off with Half-Life 2, which was originally meant to be a GTA 5 benchmark, but 
that is sort of a mess in itself to even launch on this card. Performance here, even with a maxed out overclock, was less than impressive, but we did manage a HD resolution and a somewhat playable frame rate at okay-ish looking settings. Performance would be sporadic at best, often going anywhere between 20 to 70 FPS, depending on what you were looking at. This could be down to the minuscule amount of VRAM, or the fact this is one of the worst 8400GS cards you can get, or because the entire concept of something being playable is an unknown entity to this very graphics card. Either way, it's sort of playable when you run Half-Life 2. Continuing along the theme of it being barely able to run games at the lowest settings, but at least in 720p, we have Mountain Blade Warband, which did give us an impressive showing with an actual stable frame rate. That is until you realise that this is with settings so low that there are no shadows and the game is using DirectX 7 as the rendering API. But still, it did run fairly smoothly, even in a medium-sized battle. I don't doubt larger ones would completely fill up the VRAM and bring it down to a crawl even with these settings, but still, up until that point, it does sort of work for playing Mountain Blade Warband. Now I did get a modern title running with Project Zomboid. Thankfully, they've left over a lot of the legacy options, allowing me to put together a sort of low settings preset. This combined with an 800x600 resolution did lead to us having a playable frame rate, but the card's utilisation could be all over the place given that we don't really have optimizations in the drivers for this. Even so though, you could somewhat enjoy the game on the card, but the resolution made everything very cramped, and when you're seeing, you know, slightly above 30 FPS, and it is kind of playable and smooth, I've got to give it a pass here, but the cramped resolution does make it awfully hard to play like this. Generals, I accidentally started by clicking on it in Origin, but I thought it might as well be included as a benchmark regardless because it did start the game. With the default settings in 1024x768, the game did run and did run well. I'll give the card this. This game can be a bit funny depending on some hardware you're running in your PC, it's an older game using an older engine, but there was no apparent slowdown and the game didn't crash, something that can be very problematic on newer graphics cards. It's hardly an achievement, given that we were meant to get a GTS 250 that shares the same type of drivers with this card, but still, it'll run on an 8400, but compared to the card we were meant to be getting, hardly surprising. But time for the real question. Can it run Crisis? Well, to my surprise, with that maxed out overclock, we actually did see playable frame rates in Crisis. It hovered around 30 FPS even in action, with only heavy explosions bringing it down. It didn't look too good, in fact, it looks pretty awful, which is not exactly how you're meant to be playing Crisis, but it was playable, so I'll give it that. Compared to the fact we're meant to be getting a card that can run this game in 720p with medium high settings, making it look like Crisis, it's underwhelming but um, it does run, sort of. Then to round us off with the final real test, how well can it run Ricochet? That's right, Ricochet. Well, it ran flawlessly, which should give everyone the exact type of idea on the games that are designed to run on this 8400. There's none of the GTA or things like that, or Crisis in HD resolutions, no. If you want a good gameplay experience, you should boot up Ricochet, try and find at least one of the two people still playing this game, and enjoy it on your 8400, because you'll get a silky smooth 60fps at 900p with the ultra settings. I don't know whether that's impressive, but I'm pretty sure it's not. I will just say, entirely off script, uh, this is what it's like starting most games. This is a source game for reference, and uh, we're in-game. As you can see, MSI Afterburner is running and is working. But, um, I mean, how do we say it? It's not doing a great deal. I can move the mouse. Push Start Game. It doesn't do anything. This is the cheapest graphics card experience. Or at least the one that you're getting if you order it from CEX at the moment. Not that it's CEX's fault, but whichever one of their stores sent it to me. In terms of the desktop usage, we couldn't even record things properly. So that should give you an idea of why this is not even a good car for just sticking in your PC. In general, most modern iGPUs will be better, and in terms of cheap display adapters, well, we had that Matrox card not too long ago that was far better than this, used less power, and ran far nicer. 
The only way to get things to work properly was to use optimizing software like H.264Fi just to load videos, and even when it came to the desktop, it wasn't that nice using 1080p. I really just expected better than that. The overclock was pretty much required for Windows Aero effects, and in the defense of the card, which pains me to say, it was very stable. But at that point, we're just polishing a turd to give it marks for being reasonable. The fact it struggles to run the Windows desktop doesn't make it impressive just because it doesn't crash. Performance compared with the card we should have got was pretty dire, there's no two ways about it. Throughout every title where the GTS 250, or the equivalent I've tested which is an 8800 GT, which is pretty much a one to one comparison with the GTS 250 I was meant to get, you can see that we got frankly abysmal frame rates and most games would refuse to start on this card compared to the one we were meant to get. See, the quality of what CEX sends you really does vary wildly from store to store. Some have sent me dead PC parts, others have sent me ones that are borderline new in box and have been freshly cleaned ready for my use. I'm glad to say that my local store is one of the latter ones where everything I've ever bought has been, you know, premium quality. But whatever the card came in, you know, I don't know where it's come from. It's just downright abysmal. They've used a sandwich bag instead of anti-static packaging. I mean, I'm not even asking for anti-static packaging. I've had brown paper packaging and that's fine. It's well protected. But just the level of things here annoyed me. Sure, it only cost £10. But I can order this exact card off eBay, have it nicely packaged and arrive virtually the next day out of a fresh working machine, and it's going to cost me about three to five pounds. It's just a major mistake. But crossing out the name and pricing on the packaging makes it very hard to dismiss this one case. Getting the wrong card's one thing. Getting a card which isn't even the card that it says it is, crossed out on the packaging is just another thing. CEX is a great service and I use them all the time, I get a load of parts of them, I even regularly get my phones from them as well as they do a brilliant job making sure they're in good condition, working fine and they have a brilliant warranty policy. But some of the locations really do need to clamp down on this type of thing. You can't send mispackaged and broken PC parts and we end up in this situation. If you didn't know what you were actually buying, you just bought the cheapest graphics card of CEX, well you're getting the worst card. You know, the A400 is not a good card by any means. Thankfully, I got a HD7750 off eBay for about £14, which is over in my cupboard, which is what I'm going to use for an upcoming project instead of the GTS250 I was meant to get. But anyway, the CEX rant is over. Just a few critical words that really needed to be said because of this situation I found myself in. So, in conclusion, should you buy the cheapest graphics card in the UK? Well, no. If I actually got sent a GTS 250, I'd be more inclined to agree, and so you're getting a decently high-end DirectX 10 GPU that isn't a bad shout for £8 if you needed one. But, well, most PCs are going to have better integrated graphics than what we've been sent. We were meant to get something that can play GTA 5, and we've ended up with something that can barely struggle and launch San Andreas. So if you've enjoyed watching this rather miserable turnout events, thank you very much for watching, and good night. Mm -hmm.